It seems like everyone is having a bit of trouble grasping ions and electron configuration, so I'll try to go over them in a slower, more digestible pace. Let's start with the basics. An atom normally has the same number of protons and electrons. An ion occurs when an atom has a different amount of electrons than it does protons. For example, a standard lithium atom has three protons and three electrons. If it were to become a lithium ion, it might have three protons and four electrons. The might there is very important, as an ion could have any amount of electrons. That lithium ion could also have three protons and five electrons. Now, how we represent these ions can get a little tricky. For that aforementioned ion with five electrons, we'd represent that as Li minus two. I hear you saying, But Connor, that makes no sense. You add two electrons and you represent it as minus two? Didn't you take any math classes? Yes, I have taken some math classes in my day. The confusion lies in the fact that we aren't adding two, we're adding negative two. Let me explain. Protons have a positive charge and are represented as a positive one, and electrons have a negative charge and are represented as a negative one. In a regular atom, these charges counter each other, resulting in a net charge of zero. However, in an ion, where there is an imbalance of protons and electrons, the charges spill over. If there are more electrons, you get a negative charge because of their uncountered negativeness, and if there are more protons, you get a positive charge because of their uncountered positiveness. With that in mind, let's move on to electron configuration. The minute details of which are a little beyond me at this point, so I shall keep to the basics. The first thing you need to know is electrons are stored in shells. Really, they're in weirdly shaped clouds, but that really isn't important. Each shell that gets added has electrons that carry more energy. The first shell can only have two electrons. The second shell can have up to eight electrons. The third shell can have up to 18 electrons, and so on and so forth. This is represented in the notation you see on the bottom of the element on the periodic table. For example, argon has 10 electrons. This is represented with 2-8, two, two in the inner shell and eight in the outer shell. That outer shell is really important. This outer shell is called the valent shell, and is always the very last shell of an atom. It can only hold eight electrons no matter how many shells there are. How full the shell is determines how atoms react to each other and how they bond together. If an atom has a full valent shell, then it is happy and generally won't react with anything. The closer things get to having a full valent shell, the less reactive it is. For example, sodium is a very reactive element because of its electron configuration of 2-8-1. It wants to lose that one extra electron so it can have a full valent shell. And it wants this very violently. That's one pound of sodium right there. These electrons, while generally sticking to their own shell, can occasionally jump shells. When this happens, the atom is in an excited state. What you see on the periodic table is the ground state. When it gets excited, an electron jumps up as many shells as it can. You can tell whether something is excited or not by looking for a shell that is short on electrons. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has cleared some things up.